Russell, what is the best strategy going forward for investments and asset allocation? Wish I knew it would be wealthy in a year, but uh, I think um, I think people should be taking on more risk at this point. Uh, you might say that isn't hard given the unprecedented cash balances that we have, but um, I, I do think that we've probably staved off the the you might say the Armageddon scenario. Central banks have, have done their utmost to do that. There's a lot of cash now sloshing around in the system. It seems to be finding a home in emerging market equities to some extent and commodities over the last couple of months. Obviously, it's been picked up in markets generally. But if you look at the market, if you look at the equity market, I suppose you, you might just go down through the asset classes and maybe rank what looks attractive, what doesn't. I'd say equities probably on a relative basis look look most attractive in that. You know, we look at the US probably fairly valued based on uh, you know, profits as a percentage of GDP got back to a pretty low level, about 9%. They got much lower in the early 80s, early 90s, early 2000s, about 6% or so. They were compelling points to get into the market. Uh, we weren't at a compelling point back in March, but we were at a much more attractive point than we were. US is probably the most expensive part, though. The Europe and Asia do look cheaper, um, and particularly emerging markets overall with, with maybe an Asian focus. Some of the other asset classes, I'm not convinced about government bonds. I just think we've, we've stopped the deleveraging in the private sector by taking on a lot of debt in the, in the public sector. I wouldn't be keen on the government bond market. And one big risk, I think, for all markets going, uh, you know, if you look over the next few years, is that we get a real shock in government bond markets at some point that you just, you know, there's one day where you just gap higher in, in government bond deals. I think that's a big risk given the amount of uh, funding that governments are doing. As for the other things, you know, I think uh, corporate bonds have, have been a good place to be this year. If it's a loan company with, 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 with not a lot of debt, who's got a viable business, as simple as that, uh, I think that will continue to be attractive. In terms of property, I'm not convinced, as we comments earlier on, commercial property has adjusted a long way, and actually it looks interesting versus funding costs, but residential property, I think, is going to struggle for a long, long time because we're just not going to have easy credit. So I think on a relative basis, and it's only a relative, uh, given the alternatives aren't fantastic, I think you probably would be, I would be certainly lifting my equity exposure and taking some away from cash uh, at this point. Would you do, Marco? Well, the, the thing is, where the money is needed is over here in Ireland. And a lot of when we talk about equity and commodities and the like, we're talking about international investing. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's, it's the way of the world. People have had a home bias for too long here in Ireland. And people that were close to their pensions, I'm sure you could second, uh, close to pensionable age were still over-invested in stocks relative to their lives of bonds. And uh, they're now feeling the, the pain as a consequence. Uh, I still think bonds are a good investment. You would expect to hear that from me, of course. But uh, the thing is we have an aging population. Ireland is a little bit of an exception in, in the whole of Europe, as was alluded to earlier, that population growth is still very good. Um, but in general, in Europe, um, we see an aging population, um, lower productivity growth, lower trend growth, very low inflation. I can't see inflation explode at all. Uh, despite all the quantitative easing that the central banks of the US and the UK and perhaps in the future also the ECB have engaged in. So inflation, even with commodities strong and China booming, is not going to run away from us simply because the purchasing power isn't there. Therefore, I think long-dated bonds in particular yielding anywhere over 4% are a decent investment uh, for the medium term. I wouldn't be uh, too close in the, in the, in the front. I think Ireland can take a lead. I want to sound a positive note as well. I mean, there's a great opportunity here to invest in renewable technologies like uh, wind farms and all these type of things that, you know, it's really a, a, a growth area. Uh, pharmaceuticals, perhaps, Elon is obviously a little bit uh, suffering, but there's still plenty of scope to invest in new technology, stem cell research, all these things. We have a great, well-educated workforce here. Um, the government should get the act together and, and stimulate the, those areas. My view. Right. Could be sure to tell I ramble on forever if I could. But um, I, I was talking more about strategic asset allocations, and right now, for a long term, you'd be relatively neutral on stocks. But uh, I just noticed that some of the things that weren't mentioned is that um, one of the failures here was uh, in terms of diversification in, in, in the market panic. The only thing that goes up is correlation. But if we look at truly no correlation investments, is uh, that I think you would find that uh, many investors have very little, if any, holdings in, and we'll be talking about precious metal with gold, low correlation asset. And then you're also talking environmental friendly, such as forestry, which have a good long-term future in, ter in terms of uh, in terms of returns, uh, because you're not invested in equities. 
per se, you're getting good low correlation risk return relations as well. Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca, how does this tally with what you'd like to be doing for your pension fund plans? Yeah, I would agree with uh, Charlie on the importance of strategic asset allocation. I think it hasn't been used effectively over the past few years and that uh, going forward it's the most important tool to manage the, the medium-term risk that Charlie spoke about, that uh, asset classes can produce returns that differ significantly from their expected long-term returns. I'm sure there are plenty of views around the room on this one. Does anybody wish to share one? At the front here, Joe. Sorry, I think the mic wasn't on there. Can, can, would you mind doing the question again? in different uh, ki kind of industries as well as in uh, different markets because there's a found to be very low correlation from one market to another market as it is in from one industry to an another industry because even if we are investing in different markets in USA there has to be some correlation but if we are investing in uh, USA and China or um, Mexico or in Ireland that that could be a good diversification also there are some assets that usually investors uh, used to look at is like um, low price book, val book value assets. There are loads of assets in every market. There is a book value is very high as compared to price. So that could be another uh, good way to invest. So what do you think uh, could that make sense for uh, coming to a uh, pension fund? Because I've seen my own pension which has gone down nearly 30-35% and it was a default pension fund. I wonder that how it would happen if it is really utilized. I mean, if the strategy was then normal or moderate risk. Thanks for that observation. Was is there somebody you'd like to pick that up with? Or? No, it's fine. We'll move on. Um, there was somebody over here. Yes, here. Hello, um, Arlo Pullet. Um, just, just on um, just a part, just going back to the pensions and investments, etc. Um, it just, it just seems to me between trustees, etc. There seems to be a lack of education, you know. And I, my, my good feeling is that you know, with exchange traded funds, etc. Out there, I'm just wondering, is that you know, you know, should, I, you know, I think more and more people would invest, and trust is lacking as well, obviously. And I think exchange traded funds are a, a beautiful financial product can invest in all sorts of financial assets. Did you, give us the name of your anything, sorry? Did you give us the name of your company? Sorry? Okay. <laughs> well, it is an educational <laughs> company, but, it, it, but it's, something, you know, it's something I totally believe in. And, and the, point, the point is, I think it's very, very important that anybody you talk to, nobody seems to have that knowledge, and that okay. knowledge base. And I think more and more people, if they have that knowledge, they will start investing. Because most of the majority of the money is just resting, cash is just resting there. They don't have the understanding or the confidence. So just, but, but, but I'd love to hear the panel's opinion on exchange traded funds because the logic behind it are very, very low cost and I'm just wondering is there an interest there to push it, etc. All right, well let's see if we can pick that up at the end. Uh, at the back, I think there's another one. Um, Galen Maloney, Size of Capital Management. I just wondered um, if the panel think that structured finance and private equity have had their day or whether they can keep see it coming back in the near future and on a secondary basis whether they see any value um, in structured finance, say, for example, in the secondary market at the moment, giving the, neg the negative press it has got and where it's trading at. What, what, what's your view? Um, I think from a leverage loan perspective, uh, there's, there's an awful lot of value there. You can loan to own, you can get in at 80. Um, if something goes wrong with the company, you end up owning the equity, and you could um, come out on an upside in five to 10 years. Um, from a structured finance perspective, it, it's specific to the individual asset classes. From a CDO or a CLO perspective, if you get in at the upper level, you can get returns quite quickly in a, ne in a negative downturn. Um, I wouldn't be that familiar with CMBS or MBS. Okay, thanks. So unless anybody has a burning view that's different, well, let's move on to the next observation. Dear McBradley, Institute of Bankers, uh, does the panel think that qualifications such as CFA... Sorry, Kieran, I just want to make it clear that this is actually...